Off the top at 6, the CDC is investigating the death of an Ionia County wife and mother who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. 35-year-old Ann Van Geest died a week and a half after receiving the J&J &J shot. Target 8 investigator Susan Samples is here with what we know tonight. Susan? Sue and Brian, the Centers for Disease Control confirmed to Ann Van Yee's family that it is investigating her death, which may be linked to the same blood clot complication that prompted that week and a half pause on the J&J &J vaccine. The wife, mom, and animal rescuer developed a persistent headache a week after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Ann Van Geest was vaccinated April 8th, five days before the CDC ordered a pause on J&J. &J. She died April 19th from an acute subarachnoid hemorrhage, essentially a brain bleed. Van Geest was 35 years old, right in the middle of the age range, 18 to 49, of women who got J&J &J and then developed an exceedingly rare but potentially deadly complication. Persistent headaches, like Van Geest's, were among their symptoms. It's really critical that healthcare providers be aware that this condition exists, even though it's exceedingly rare, because we need to know how to step in and diagnose it and how to treat it appropriately. University of Michigan Dr. Jeffrey Barnes did not treat Van Geest and has no knowledge of her case, but he confirmed subarachnoid hemorrhage, Van Geest's cause of death, could be connected to the J&J &J complication, which involves clotting and bleeding. When it happens, it's, it is this unusual combination of blood clotting and often bleeding that goes along with it, which is part of what makes it uh, tricky for us as physicians to appropriately treat it. But Barnes noted the CDC has developed step-by-step -step guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of the condition, which happened 15 times out of 8 million doses. He also emphasized the usefulness of the single-dose J&J vaccine for people who might not be able to make it back for a second dose. If I had a, a family member, a younger family member who was a woman, who told me that she was really concerned about having to go get two shots, but was willing to get one shot, then I would absolutely encourage her to go and get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I think the risk here is exceedingly small. The risks associated with getting COVID-19 and the many different things that it can do to our body, those are much higher. That's the thing I'm, I'm far more concerned about. A representative of the Van Geest family sent us a statement describing her as a loving mother, wife, sister, and daughter, and an active member of the animal rescue community who will be remembered as a fierce advocate, a master multitasker, and a caring friend by her colleagues, fellow volunteers, and family. A GoFundMe page has been set up for Ann Van Geest family. You'll find that link inside our story at woodtv.com. Back to you. So that investigation gets underway, Susan. In the meantime, how are local health care providers handling the J&J &J shot? Right, because that pause, of course, was lifted. Metro told us today, they actually put out a, a news release that they are not giving the J&J &J vaccine to women in that age group out of an abundance of, of caution. Uh, Mercy Health says it is not recommending that for uh, the J&J &J vaccine for women in that age group. Spectrum Health says that it will provide the J&J &J to anyone who wants it when it's available, but it first makes sure that the patient understands the risks and benefits, including the specific concerns about the J&J &J vaccine. Brian. Susan Samples, thank you.